everybody, what's going on? It's Mac here. Welcome back to another new video. Today we're doing something uh, that kind of sits on a moral gray area. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing that you're going to need is a web browser open to a few different apps. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is a tool called uh, Calibre. Calibre? Calibre. Uh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's get in a little bit of an assist here. Calibre. Mm, I don't know if I buy that. Maybe. Anyways, this is a fairly well-known tool. This is just a good like ebook uh, management tool. And then the next thing is a tool from a guy on GitHub, Apprentice Apprentice Harper, and this is a tool that he's built to uh, you know DDRM. So download both of those. Um, right now we're at version 6.6.3. If you see anything newer, obviously get that, but if you just download this zip file here, it's gonna have the proper files for um, every platform. Next thing we need is uh, an actual book with a DRM lock. So the first, I just went to Amazon, like the Kindle bookstore, and grabbed the first free book that I saw. It's pretty easy to get a book with a DRM lock. Just buy or download any book from Kindle store, uh, Apple Books, uh, Google Play Books. There are very few uh, big ebook vendors that aren't gonna get that are gonna give you books um, without a DRM lock. Uh, if you're interested, though, there actually is one. Uh, it's called Open Books. There's a link to it straight from the Caliber um, homepage. Okay, so this is a legitimate place to buy books without a DRM lock, but presumably if you've been buying ebooks for any amount of time, you already have quite a few of them that have a DRM lock. So we're just going to go ahead and drop this book into the app here. And it's going to sync up. Like, there's, we can totally use this book with Calibre and just use it to send to other Kindle devices. But I feel like kind of the whole point is to convert it and be able to send it to multiple devices. So if we do try to convert it gonna oh immediately we get a little ding here hey this is this is locked you can't do that let's go ahead and implement our uh, our new tool here ddrm tools if we go ahead and un unzip our zip file here open up the folder we're gonna have plugin for caliber a mac app and a windows app what we want is gonna just be the caliber plugin then we're going to get another zip file, go ahead and do that. Then we get DDRM plugin and a folder with a whole bunch of app files. Next thing that we want to do, open up Calibre, Calibre. I really don't know how to pronounce it at all. Come up here, we're going to come up to preferences. It's going to be similar in um, PC or Linux. Just look for preferences or settings or something. And then if we scroll down to the bottom, we're going to have an option plugins. And then we want to do load plugin from file. And what do you know? It's going to be pretty no nonsense from here. We're just going to go and track down that plugin. Oops, add one more folder. There we go. Select the containing folder, not any specific file within it. Hit open. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, you know what it is? I think it's actually we just need the zip file. Installing plugins is security risk. Yes. DDRM. We have to restart Calibre for this to take effect. Okay, yeah, so we didn't even need to extract the folder. That's that's my bad there. We just need that zip file inside of it, and that's how it'll want to install. So we're going to go ahead and hit apply, close, and we need to do a restart of Calibre here. So I'm just going to quit out of it, and we'll open it back up in just a second here. Come on, there we go. Okay, so now we've still got our book um, added in here. And if we go ahead and try to convert it one more time, and let's see here, it shouldn't, yeah, it's still not going to work until we do one last little bit here. So come up to Calibre, go over to Preferences, and then find our plugin. Search for DRM. Uh, there's our app. And what we need to do is customize plugin. And now we have a couple of options for configurations. There are a number of different vendors which this can break. Um, DRM locks from Barnes and Noble, Kindle, Adobe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, e-ink Kindle eBooks. That's what this is. And we need a serial number for a Kindle. So this is fairly easy to track down. You can just Google, hey, how do I find my serial number for insert device, Nook, Kindle, iPad with iBooks or whatever. And then all you're going to want to do is hit add. And it's going to give you a spot to go ahead and add that uh, serial number. Okay, we're gonna hit close, go ahead and do all that. Hit apply, 
close out of that, and then we might have to restart the app one more time. I don't know, but we'll go ahead and try and just do a convert here. Convert to EPUB. Okay. Okay, yeah, we're good. So now we can edit any of the metadata for this and send it to whatever device we want. We can export it, drop it to, into Google Books. We can use it with uh, Apple's uh, book app, which is pretty great. Um, so here at the end of the video, I wanted to clarify something. Like I said, this is a little bit of a gray area and it is, but I'm not actually showing anyone how to steal books. Um, case in point, um, if I pirate a book, torrent it, download it somewhere, it's presumably not going to have a DRM lock on it. That wouldn't be very useful to me to begin with. So in order to have a book with a DRM lock, you had to have bought it somewhere in the first place. This is more about just wanting to have control over a product that you've already bought. For example, I have a Kindle Paperwhite and I read on it uh, relatively a lot, but why can't I also have all of those books on an iPad? or an iPhone, or why can't I put them on a Nook? I don't know if anyone's still using Nooks, but if I wanted to have my entire library on a Nook and a Kindle, why isn't that theoretically possible? Actually, funny story about the Nooks. I used to work at a, um, a Barnes and Noble, well, for a little while I did, and we had like these four Nooks on display, and people are coming in, they already are like, no one wanted ever wanted to buy a Nook, because it was just Kindle was the thing, I feel like, and then Nooks kind of came around uh, as Barnes & Noble was trying to compete with Amazon, and then it was like, oh, it just feels like a knockoff, you know? It's like it's like when everyone was first getting smartphones, and then there were like the cool people that got like the Galaxy or the iPhone or whatever, and then everyone else got just like the kind of generic like $20 Android phone that was very obviously just a knockoff. It was garbage. It's like that. I feel like that's everyone's perception of the Nook. But anyways, we had these four Nooks on display. And there was this one that was like geared towards kids. It had no power, like no memory. It was still using like Android, I don't know, freaking like lollipop or something. It was, it was garbage. And towards like the last few months that I worked there, the thing just stopped working. I, I tried everything I could to get it to work again. So we're sitting there, we had the Nooks on display. And 25% of the ones on display just didn't work, wouldn't turn on, total black screen. No one ever bothered to replace it, as far as I know. Uh, so that's my pitch for everyone to go ahead and buy Nook. It's a superior product. Um, anyways, that is all for uh, this video. Thank you, everyone, for checking it out. And I will see you in the next video.